Hi everyone, welcome to science. Today we are learning to understand the phases of the moon. So what I'm looking for is that I can explain why you can only see one side of the moon and I can complete a model of the different phases of the moon and I can recall the names for each phase of the moon. Just pause this video while you copy in the Walt and the Wilf. Just a few facts before we get started. So did you know that it takes around 28 days for the moon to orbit or go around the Earth once? And we call this a lunar month. Now because our months are generally a bit longer than this, so 30, 31 days, we have a new moon at different times each month. So we don't always have a new moon at the start of a month or at the end, it always changes. Now when I say new moon, what I mean by that is that that's when the moon starts a new 28 day cycle. So we just call that a new moon, it doesn't actually mean that we have a whole new different moon. Now also, did you know that the date of Easter is also based on the moon? So that's why we have a different date for Easter each year. So Easter falls on the first Sunday after a full moon on or after March the 21st. So for example, Easter is always going to be after March the 21st. So if we had a full moon on the 25th of March or the 4th of April, then it would be the next Sunday after that. The Earth takes 365.25 days to travel around the sun or 365 and a quarter days to go around the sun, which makes up a whole year. So it takes us a whole year for us to travel all the way around the sun. Now we travel around the sun at about 1,800 kilometres an hour. So if you think about how fast we travel on a highway, which is about 110 kilometres an hour, that is really, really fast how fast we go around the sun. Now, because it takes 365 and a quarter days to go around the sun, that's why after four years, all those quarters add up to make one whole day. So at the end of the four years, we have a leap year. So in February, we add an extra day on February the 29th. Now, as we travel around the sun, the moon travels around us. So the moon, which is that tiny, tiny dot there, travels around us. And it just loops and loops and loops around us as we loop around the Earth, uh, the Sun, sorry. Now the reason why it takes so long to go around the Sun is because it is so big compared to Earth. Now this is actually a two scale model. Um, so that's how big the Sun is compared to the Earth. So we are just a tiny, tiny dot. And then the Moon is even smaller than that. But the reason why from Earth they look the same size is because the Moon is about 400 times smaller than the Sun, but also it's 400 times closer to the Earth. So, for example, if you have a look at, um, I've got a basketball sitting, let's throw a point <laughs> there. <laughs> I've got a basketball sitting there, and I've got a tennis ball right here. Now, they are completely different sizes, but the way that they are sitting, they look like they're the same size. If I go and get the basketball though, and bring it closer, you'll be able to see that they're completely different sizes. So that's why from the Earth, it looks like um, the Sun and the moon are the same size, but actually they're completely different. Have you ever looked up at the sky and noticed how the moon changes shape each night and wondered why and how that works? Well, it doesn't actually change shape at all. The moon doesn't give off light itself. The moonlight that we see is the sun's light reflected off the moon's surface. So as the moon goes around Earth, the sun lights up different parts of the moon, making it seem as if the moon is changing shape. But it's just our view of the moon that's changing. It takes 27.3 days for the moon to make a complete orbit around the Earth. 
so to travel all the way around the Earth. And because the Earth is moving around the Sun at the same time, it takes 29.5 days to go through different phases, which is called a lunar month. So during those different phases, we can see different parts of the Moon from Earth. For example, if my torch is the Sun and my face is the Moon, at different times of the month, you'll be able to see different parts. For example, at the moment, half of my face is quite dark and half of my face is really light. So from the Earth, you would be able to see half of the Moon. But as the Moon changes position, you can see more and more of the Moon or more and more of my face as I move. As I said before, there are eight phases of the moon cycle and these eight phases all have different names. Now, what we start off with is the new moon. So that's when we cannot see the moon at all. So that's the start of the new phase. Um, the sun is shining behind it. So from Earth, we can't see it or we can't see it very well. The second phase is the waxing crescent moon. So that's when we can only see um, a part of it. So it's not quite half, um, it's between half and none at all. The third phase is one that I guess it confuses me because I suppose being a maths teacher, it's called the first quarter moon. Now if I was thinking of a quarter or one quarter, it doesn't look like this at all. So when it is the first quarter moon, we can actually see half. Now the first quarter, the name, actually means that it's through one quarter of its phase of the moon cycle. So it's not talking about how much of the moon we can see, it's talking about um, the different phases. So when it is the first quarter moon, we can see half. So it is a little bit confusing. Um, Phase number four is the waxing gibbous moon. So that's when we can almost see all of it, but not quite. Um, number five is the full moon. So that's when if you go outside at midnight or something, um, it's not pitch black dark usually. You can actually see because the moon, we can see all of it. So you can see a great big circle in the sky and it's usually lighting up the night a little bit if there's no clouds about, I guess. Um, number six is is the waning gibbous moon. So that's when it's starting to disappear again. Number seven is the last quarter moon. So that is the same as what I talked about before. We can't see a quarter of it. We can see half of it, but we're seeing the other half. So for the first quarter moon, it was lit up on one side. This time it's lit up on the other side as it starts to disappear. And number eight is the waning crescent moon, where it's almost disappeared again, ready to go back into the phase of the new moon again. Now it's your turn. I'd like you to create your own model of the phases of the moon. Now you can use something similar to what I've got on the screen um, to create the little circles. Toilet roll, empty toilet rolls work really, really well, but I'm sure you could find something at home, um, possibly in the kitchen to use as well to draw this. Um, making sure that your phases of the moon are all labelled and I would like you to get creative with this as well. So on the next few slides I've got some examples of things that you can do to create your own phases of the moon model. What I might do is pick some that are really creative, my favourites, um, to go in the newsletter. So I'll be looking out for people that are being really creative with their moon phases. 
One of my favourite ways to create a phases of the moon model is to use Oreos. So if you pull apart the Oreo, you are left with some filling, which you can easily scrape away to represent the different phases. And it is an absolutely delicious way to represent the phases of the moon as well. Another way that you can be creative with your phases of the moon model is to use carrots. Now it's not as delicious as Oreos, but it's definitely healthier. So this is one that I created on the weekend, um, just slicing up the carrots and then eating part of it to represent the different phases of the moon. Of course, you don't need to use food to create your moon phases model. You can do it using artwork as well. Just make sure that you label each phase so it is clear on your model. Good luck, everyone. I'm looking forward to looking at your eight phases of the moon models. Bye.